So the second one is actually similar to the first one in some respects, uh, but there are some differences. So the first key idea, uh, could you please switch off the microphone? Yeah, thank you. The first key idea in this uh, algorithm, which is called the SPIMI algorithm, single pass in memory indexing. What this algorithm does is, it does not maintain that term to term ID map that we just discussed. It's going to work directly with term comma doc ID pairs. Okay, so there is going to be no need to maintain the term to term ID mappings. So that's the first key idea. The second key idea is it's not going to do any to require any sorting. Okay, and this is actually pretty remarkable if you think about it, because there is a very simple way to build a dictionary for each block without needing to sort. So how do we do that? Well, imagine parsing the first document. Okay, so you'll generate a set of terms, all with doc ID of one. Now, you can dynamically create a dictionary and keep adding these terms that you're seeing to the dictionary. Okay, so you can build a dictionary dynamically. As you are seeing more and more terms in that document, you'll keep on adding those terms to this dictionary. And then from each term, you will have, again, all this is happening in main memory, right? This entire stream is being generated and is being stored in main memory until you run out of main memory. Okay, and that's going to become one block. So within a block, within the first block, what you're doing is as you are seeing more and more terms, you're adding them to the dictionary. And at the same time, you're adding the doc IDs you're seeing to the ends of the postings lists that you're seeing for those terms. Okay. So let's say there's a term like uh, moon. Okay, so moon appeared in the first document, and so I'll add a posting with the doc ID one. Now let's say when parsing the tenth document, I again see moon. So what I'll do is I'll take that uh, ordered pair moon comma ten. I know that moon is in the dictionary, so I'll just take that ten and append it to the end of that list. Then when I encounter moon again in the twenty-fifth document. I will just take that doc ID 25 and append it to the end of the moon list. Because the doc IDs I'm seeing are in increasing order, every time I have to add a new posting, I can just add it to the end of the existing postings list for that term. And that way, the postings list that will be created for this block will already be sorted. I don't need to separately sort it. Is that clear? So what we can do is we can do something like this and generate a complete inverted index for each individual block without needing to sort it. And then just like the previous algorithm, we will have 10 separate inverted indexes, one for each block stored on disk. Okay. And in the merge step, we will again merge these 10 indexes into a single index. Okay, and this merging is pretty similar to the previous merge, uh, to, to the merge step of the previous algorithm we saw. Because what we will do is, because the index will be stored in sorted order of terms, so we'll just take the first few terms of the first index first few terms of this index, the first few terms of this index, first few terms of this index and so on, with their postings lists of course, and bring them all into main memory, all 10 of them. And then we will do some kind of a merge procedure where we will unify those 10 uh, sections using those 10 pointers that are walking through each of those 10 lists. And once any of the pointers crosses uh, the boundary of those few records that we got into main memory, we will fetch the next few records from that block. So 
So here is the pseudocode for the algorithm. It's a little complicated, but uh, just bear with me. Uh, it's not written in the best, poss in the simplest possible language, but we can try to make sense of this. So this is the algorithm, SPIMI invert. Output file is the file that is that at the end of the algorithm is going to have the entire inverted index. Okay. So what we do is we initially start off with an empty dictionary. Again, we are going to build an inverted index for each individual block. Right? So in preparation for building the index for the first block, we are starting with an empty dictionary. Now, as long as I still have free memory available, I will generate the next ordered pair. Okay, I will generate the next term comma doc ID pair. Okay, I'm assuming here that we are parsing the documents in the corpus sequentially one by one, assigning every document that we are seeing a higher ID, one more than the previous ID. So as long as I still have free memory available to fill in the block, I'm going to generate the next term comma doc ID pair. Okay, and I'm going to check if this term already exists in the dictionary or not. If it does not exist in the dictionary, I will add it to the dictionary. Okay, if the term does not exist in the dictionary, I will add it to the dictionary and I will create an empty postings list for that term because it's the, uh, it's, it's the first time I'm seeing that term. So I'm going to create a postings list. It won't exactly be empty. There'll be a single element in that postings list. It will be this particular doc ID. Okay, so I'm adding this line is adding the term to the dictionary and creating a postings list for that term with a single element which is this particular doc ID. If this term did exist in the dictionary, that is this else condition, if this term was already in the dictionary, that means there must have been an existing postings list for that term. So I'm just going to look at that postings list. And I'm going to just ignore these two lines for the moment. I'm going to add this doc ID at the end of that postings list. So actually this particular line is something that is common to both this and this, right? Because it's appearing outside this if condition. So think of this as just creating an empty postings list. Think of just as just retrieving the existing postings list. And in either case, you want to add this doc ID to the end of the postings list. So that is something you can do outside this if condition because it's the same thing you have to do regardless of whether the then condition is true or the else clause is true. Now, there are these two lines over here which correspond to what happens if your postings list become full. So, we are assuming here, recall from chapter one, that variable length arrays make a lot of sense when you are implementing uh, a postings list in main memory because uh, you know, you can exploit caching and so on. You can just add new elements to the end directly. So, of course, you can do that with a linked list also, but then you'll, you're also going to save space on pointers. You don't need pointers if you implement a postings list using an array because the next element is just, uh, the next entry in the postings list is just going to be stored in the next element of the array. So, you'll allocate a certain amount of space in the array for the postings list. Now, as more and more postings get added to that array, at some point you may run out of space in that array. In that case, you may have to basically create a larger array of double the size as the previous array and then restore all the elements from that array into that new larger array. Okay, So, th that's what this line is doing. It's saying that if I run out of array space, then I'm going to create a new array of double the size and then transfer all the elements from that previous array into this larger array. 
Now at the end of this step 10, what I would have is, I would have an inverted index for that particular block. Okay, now I need to write that particular inverted index to the disk and the way I'm going to write it to disk is I'm going to write it in sorted order of terms, right? So I do need to do some amount of sorting here, but this is just a sorting of terms. This is not a sorting of term comma doc IDs. I want to ensure that the first entry I write to disk is the postings list for the first term in lexicographic order. The second postings list that needs to be written to disk is of the second term in lexicographic order and so on. So I'm going to sort the terms in the dictionary and write down the, their post and, and write their postings list to disk in that particular sorted order. So this is how I create an index for one block and I'll do this for all 10 blocks and then finally merge the inverted indexes for those 10 blocks into a single unified inverted index. Any questions about this algorithm? It's pretty similar to the previous one uh, with some variations as I described in the previous slide. You're not actually doing sorting of term comma doc ID pairs, you're just directly accumulating the postings and you're not maintaining a separate term to term ID map. You're directly storing term comma doc IDs. Now, as you will see in the next uh, chapter, the postings lists and the dictionaries will, ne will need to be compressed so that they fit into main memory and hard disk respectively. And compression techniques can work well with uh, the sorting algorithm that I just saw. But of course, uh, unless you know what those compression techniques are, it's going to be difficult to make sense of this slide. So let's just ignore it for now. 